to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking pantomime for December 2019 into 2020. And there's a pantomime at SEC this year in Glasgow called Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the fairest panto in all the land by Kudos. And it stars Gary Tank Commander, Dune McKeegan and Lee McRae. And I'm delighted to say that Hayden Parker was there for us tonight as our reporter. How are you doing, Hayden? Yeah, I'm great, thank you. Yeah, good, thank you. I mean, we've had a day already in Glasgow for Kudos seeing Jack and the Beanstalk, five stars. Tonight you go to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. How was this? I'm not going to lie, I wasn't overly impressed. The main three turns were absolutely stunning and the Snow White as well was absolutely brilliant. But one thing, and I've previously appeared in the press about this is it's called Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs it should be Snow White with seven blokes on their knees Hmm. I saw a production of this I think it was at Dartford where they'd got a black actor on his knees playing a dwarf with white legs and it appears that nobody in the cast or creatives had noticed this other than me. And they were very offended when I pointed out that, A, we've gone a step too far putting actors on their knees. We should be clear, it is a disability right dwarfism. And therefore, should people be taking the mickey out of it and making jokes of it like they do in these pantomimes? It leaves me uncomfortable. I don't know about you. I really detest it. I understand it in small provincial theatres. But when you're a company such as Kudos, who are the biggest in the business... And they need to be kind of sensitive to these things. I mean, you wouldn't get somebody on stage blacking up. I know from my own podcast and interviewing dwarves, there are plenty of actors out there who are more than willing and able to do the job. What is it then with Kudos? Why don't they care about these endless stories? In fact, I haven't seen it this year, but I know for about three or four years consecutively, I may even have written a couple of them, there were stories every year about this, and it becomes sort of the running joke every year that there's a page lead about actors on their knees. They don't seem to see this as a problem, or are they just completely arrogant and don't care? They are doing it in Birmingham. They did it last year at the Palladium. I don't get why it would be a problem to them, and it really did taint it for me. Mm. Is it um, inappropriate because they make gags about them? I know with the production I saw, there were sort of little jokes and all of those puns that they do about little and small and all of that. Have they wiped those out this year? Sadly not. They were even referred to, at one point, there was a song, uh, the Westlife song, You Raise Me Up, makes you feel four foot tall. I didn't find that very nice. And also as well, the reference to them as cut price umpa lumbers. I know it's said as a baddie to the dwarves or the guys portraying dwarves, but it just didn't sit well to me. Well, it's as Julian would say, thing. these dwarves can leave a nasty taste in your mouth. Well, can't, can't everybody. Mm. But um, These actors just... on their knees during Snow White. <laughs> Uh, let's move on from that and talk about uh, the performances within the show. Tell me about the stars within it. I mean, were they good? Were they brilliant? Were they fantastic? Oh, Greg McHugh absolutely stole the show, to be fair. He does this character called Gary Tank Commander, who uh, was big a few years back on uh, BBC. Had a fantastic show all about this uh, very camp soldier, but it's never referenced his sexuality is never referenced at all and with with every right he's he's just this very camp soldier who is hilarious and everybody loves him a little bit stupid a little bit over tanned a little bit teeth whitened and he plays this character to such great applause from the audience mm. he's joined as well unbelievably by a lovely lady called Liam McRae who plays his mum who is actually playing his uh his friend in in the TV show, and they work so well together. They even do the song sheet together. Right. And in terms of set, is this an impressive Kudos production, or is it one of their cheap ones like they seem to be sticking in places like Northampton and Darlington that don't quite match up to bigger cities? Uh, it was it was impressive. It could have been a little bit more spectacular. I was expecting a, a dash more magic. Uh, the twins only supplied two effects. And neither of those were uh, sort of the the things that would make you go, wow. Uh, one of which was a, a Vanish production, which uh, kind of blink and you miss it. And the other one was the TV screen that comes down with as the magic mirror. Mm. So, Anything else you'd like to say about it that was joyful or fun? Well, just the audience interaction with Doom McKeegan. Um, it's her first time in pantomime. 
for somebody who's so new, she really, really gets the part. Mm. Um, she's embracing all the booze. She's playing evil very well. And she's just a delight. And she's got a great voice as well. One thing that you did love in the show? Ah, oh, was the road signs sketch where they named all these local towns, which as, as a southerner, I, I don't know the geography of the Glasgow area, but the audience were absolutely laughing their heads off. And it was a great bit of wordplay, real nod back to the old variety days. And that was carried out by uh, Greg and Leah. And they were just they were having a blast with it. And the audience were really, really enjoying it. Let's talk about the venue generally. I mean, this is one of those venues that is not generally liked by performers or the public. It's huge and it's not a theatre, is it? No, it's like a conference centre. Um, bit of a problem that I did notice with a lot of the children, and there were a lot of children at tonight's seven o'clock performance, is the fact that even with booster seats, it's on the flats. The stalls are actually flat. So there's a slight incline, but it it makes it very difficult for them to see. They're high back chairs. It's not designed as a theatre. And for that size of venue it's a 3,000 seater and it was very difficult I can imagine for the performers if it it, it was a sellout show tonight but if they've got eight, 900 people in there it would feel like a ghost town you're not selling this for me I have to say despite the talent I, I'm hearing a sort of lacklustre disappointment in your voice which is a shame having spoken to you only six hours ago about the Magnificent Kings uh, with Jack and the Beanstalk it, it seems like to have two pantos in one town there's really only one contender this year absolutely I love my kudos pantomimes I really do but it just felt like a slightly short pun the pun but it just didn't have that spark or that magic. I mean, the dancing was great. Costumes were okay, um, but no sort of standout wow factors for me. And I know that people around me as well, I noticed there were a lot of people on their phones. Oh, dear. Well, that's the greatest insult of all. And the fact that nobody cares they're on their phones is even more worrying. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the fairest panto of all in the land, uh, is starring Gary Tank Commander and Dune McKeegan and Lee McRae through until the 31st of December. Also an incredibly short run. That's less than two weeks if you take out Christmas. That's extraordinary. Bizarre, isn't it, how they can even make money on it? This is sort of a filler panto from what you've said. SEC Armadillo is the venue for Snow White and the Seven Dwarves with dwarves on their knees full height six foot actors dear 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 will they ever learn as he picks up the phone and phones the sun uh, I'm joking of course Hayden Parker thank you so much for your time and uh, we look forward to another five star one next time please what are we giving this three unfortunately thank you for your time thanks mate